Hello and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. In this week's episode, you're going to be getting this episode the morning before Election Day here in the United States. I want to talk about Election Day crisis management, some last-minute strategies to help you protect your organization. In last week's episode, I talked about the 2024 election and the potential for civil unrest here in the United States as we navigated this very tumultuous presidential election and what may take place between the election and the inauguration on January 20th, 2025. So there's a number of risks that we talked through last week. I don't want to rehash those. But everything from physical security issues to potential cyber threats are all possibilities of things that could happen. It's not just civil unrest here in the United States, but it's also the it is a key time for nation state actors or others interested in sowing discord in the United States to take action to take advantage of that state of affairs here. So this is my attempt to talk through some last minute preparedness tips and some things to think about um, this week with election day and election week and how to stay calm under pressure. So the first one is just to talk through a few of the anticipated risks. We've talked about um, in last week's episode about civil unrest, uh, about the potential for protests in high traffic areas, about the potential for protests at capitals in swing states like Pennsylvania and Arizona, um, Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, and some of the other states, Georgia, where there's a high likelihood of a close election and um, all of the things that may come into play around that. There are also cybersecurity threats, everything from phishing attempts to disinformation campaigns that are targeted at employees or at those that might be more subject or more um, uh, more susceptible to disinformation and misinformation, particularly from foreign actors that may get involved. And of course, misinformation in general on social media has a lot of potential impact on your team because that could be directed at your company as much as it is directed at political aspects of what's going on. So I want to talk just through five key crisis management tips for election day. The first one is just to monitor trusted news sources and social media. If you can, use tools to do so or assign members of your team to track breaking news or online activity that could signal emerging threats. And not just looking at trusted news sources on social media, but what other potential misinformation is going on. The second is to make sure that you have secure communication channels, making sure that you and the members of your crisis management team have secure and reliable ways to communicate quickly and effectively. If Microsoft Teams, for example, is your principal way of communicating internally, then what uh, is your backup to that? Is it Signal? Is it text groups? Do you have a standby Slack instance? What is that other communications channel that you would use? The third is to just reinforce your remote or distributed work policies. You should be prepared for the possibility of having to shift more employees to remote work um, if protests or disruptions impact your physical locations. And of course, this is more challenging if you're in um, healthcare delivery or manufacturing where you have to do hands-on work. Number four is where appropriate, strengthen your physical security measures, Checking, double checking your access control, considering adding additional personnel, security personnel, reception personnel, and make sure that your building has secure entry points that you have reviewed. And then lastly, what is your cybersecurity posture? Not just the basics, your antivirus software, VPNs, multi-factor, but are you prepared um, for the possibility of heightened activity during the week and months to come. The third area is just your role as a leader and those of other leaders in your organization in just fostering a sense of calm and reassurance with your team. Again, I think transparent communication comes into play, um, being proactive in addressing concerns from your employees, acknowledging the tension during this time, and assuring staff of the organization's efforts to prepare for this critical moment. Making sure that managers can stay available and that they're checking in with their teams throughout the day and addressing concerns promptly. And then lastly, 
Uh, remind employees of your available mental health and wellness resources to help them manage stress. No matter who wins this election, half of your company is likely to be unhappy about that situation. So uh, continuing to be able to help them through your company's normal wellness resources is important. From a business continuity standpoint, I think reviewing your business continuity capabilities. So are backups working as usual? Do you have good endpoint security? Um, are your disaster recovery protocols ready? Is your team available? Um, reaffirming your critical vendor contacts, for example, and their availability in the next two months, um, their backup location so they can maintain operations to support you. Um, and then again, any alternate work locations or remote setups. But what are your contingency plans to make sure your critical teams can work from safe locations if necessary? And lastly, it's not just going to be about election day. It will be about the next two months, as we saw in the last presidential election in 2020. So I would encourage you to just continue to keep your team up to date, to think about um, agility and adaptability with your crisis management team, because you may see prolonged civil unrest or uncertainty with the election. Um, I think the importance of staying informed through trusted resources with designated personnel or services tracking key events and local developments and reminding your teams to communicate any ongoing changes to your employees in a clear and calm manner. This is a great time to reinforce just confidence in your organization's preparedness and reinforce to your leaders um, that by planning ahead, um, you've put the organization in a great position to remain resilient and responsive no matter what happens with the outcome of the election and the activities that will follow. I hope this is the last time uh, in an election year that I have to talk about this level of disruption and the potential for unrest and the need for preparedness, but it's better to be open uh, or approach these situations with our eyes wide open than to have our head in the sand and not be prepared for what may come in the coming six to eight weeks. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty podcast. I'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.